Hi everyone, my name is Greg Knox and I'm the Executive Director of Skeena Wild Conservation Trust. And I just wanted to update people on what they can expect for this coming season in terms of salmon returns, uh, what fisheries will likely take place, some of the challenges we're seeing with uh, climate change and the ocean and freshwater conditions, and also some suggestions on what you can do to help the situation. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans does forecasting each year for the different species and what we can expect to see come back during the season. So for this coming summer, uh, for sockeye salmon, Department of Fisheries and Oceans is projecting 1.7 million sockeye to return into the Skeena. This is a little below normal. We usually see two to two and a half million sockeye come back, uh, but it's still above what we need for spawning. So there are fisheries planned, both commercial and recreational fisheries. So that's good news. For Chinook salmon, Department of Fisheries and Oceans is predicting about 40,000 fish back into the Skeena. This is similar to what we saw last year, but well below the long-term average. We usually see 60 to 100,000 Chinook back into the system. They are planning to have recreational fisheries in the Skeena itself and also in the marine environment out of Prince Rupert and on the north coast. There are no uh, Chinook fisheries, uh, commercial fisheries planned for this season. For coho salmon, uh, DFO is expecting poor returns. Last year we saw really bad returns of coho salmon and we're going to be keeping our eye on what we see in season. Uh, there are fisheries planned, but this may, be, need, may need to be adjusted in season depending on how many coho we see returning. For pink salmon, we're expecting a low return this year. Last year we saw very few pink salmon on the north coast and uh, that's concerning. So again, we're going to have to look and see what sort of numbers of, of pinks are showing up in season uh, so that we can make uh, informed decisions about fisheries during that time. Uh, so there may be commercial and recreational fisheries for pink salmon, but that may be adjusted in season, depending on the numbers. For chum salmon, uh, chum have been depressed for a long time on the north coast, especially in the Skeena and Nass. Uh, we're not expecting very many chum this, this season. Uh, most fisheries are closed for chum retention and we're really in a rebuilding phase for chum salmon. For steelhead, they're really hard to predict pre-season, so there are no estimates of what we might see. Last year we saw decent returns of, of steelhead and we're hoping that we will see decent returns again this year uh, back into the Skeena and Nass and other systems. So the reason we've been seeing a lot of these poor returns in the last few years is because salmon have had really poor conditions, both in the ocean and in fresh water. In the ocean, we've had uh, really warm con ocean conditions. And what this means is when we have warm water, it means less food for the fish. You have less uh, zooplankton, uh, less nutrients coming up from the deep, feeding these small little shrimp that both salmon eat and, bo and the fish that salmon eat depend on. They're the basis of the whole food chain out there in the North Pacific. So between 2013 and 2016 we saw really warm water out there and poor food conditions. Uh, it, it cooled off in 2017 and 2018 which meant better conditions for salmon. However that warm water returned this past fall and has maintained through the winter and into the spring now and is likely to continue into the summer. So generally we have poor food conditions for salmon out there in the ocean. In the freshwater we saw a lot of drought conditions on the north coast this past summer and fall. That continued well into, into November which is unprecedented. That means that those adult salmon returning in the summer and fall face harder conditions. Also the young salmon often got stranded and died in pools in the shallows on the edges of the river. So really uh, tough times for those fish that were returning last year. And that drought has continued into this spring and will likely continue into this summer. We currently have about 56% of normal, the normal snowpack here in the region. And that snow is really important to feed these rivers well into the summer. So the rivers are likely to drop and we're, we're probably going to see drought conditions unless we get a lot of rain this, this summer, but it's predicted to be a dry summer. 
And so all of this means that we're going to just have to be a little bit more careful and thoughtful about how we manage fish because this situation likely isn't going to get better anytime soon. Uh, climate change is here to stay and these sorts of conditions will likely become more common. So we have to be a lot more careful in how we manage salmon. So there are a number of things that you can do to help this situation. First of all, educate yourself. You need to be aware of what's going on. Uh, a good ways to do that are to try to keep updated. We're going to be putting out videos, share this videos, these videos with your friends so that other people know what's happening out there. Also, there's, there's things like the Thai t Test Fishing Index that DFO has. Go to their website, look at the numbers in season. You can compare these numbers to historical averages and get a good idea of what sort of returns we're getting for Chinook and sockeye and the other species. Another thing that you can do is be adaptable with your fishing. So if you know there's good returns of uh, sockeye salmon coming back, focus your harvest on the sockeye salmon. If you know there's, there's not very many coho salmon coming back, try to reduce your, your catch of coho salmon to protect those fish. Uh, we just have to be a little smarter about how we harvest fish. We can st still get out there and harvest, but try to focus on those strong species and lay off of the weaker ones. It's really important to get involved in local conservation efforts. There are a lot of great community groups doing salmon conservation in the region. Find out who those groups are, get involved in those groups, get your kids involved, and come out to local events when you can, when you see them happening in your community. Finally, it's important to, to donate to conservation. Donate to those groups, help fund them. You can also donate to groups like Skeena Wild Conservation Trust so that we can continue to do this work. These sorts of things are becoming more and more important and we all need to step up if we wanna be able to continue to come out here and enjoy this resource with our families, spend time in the river, spend time in the ocean, be able to take some fish home to barbecue. The future of this resource depends on all of us, so please get involved and do your part. So if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us at skeenawild.org, give us a phone call. We're always interested in trying to answer people's questions and help people figure out what they can do to get involved in salmon conservation.